Okay, here we are. As you can see, I've turned my office into a studio, and this is a Physics 2A first video lecture. We're going to see how this goes, and uh, it's a learning curve for everybody. So let me get a start here by telling you to take notes. The only way you can learn this subject is if you write these things down. It goes through your hand to your brain. We've talked about that before. And uh, I have a couple of problems here to work, and I'll talk about more about that later. So you want to take notes, and the way I'm going to control this is that you're going to send me pictures of your handwritten notes. Um, the due dates will be announced, but probably once a week, pictures of your handwritten notes. They don't have to be that detailed. You can lay them all on the table, take a picture, and that way we'll control for doing it. The material, will be in these notes. It'll be completely in these notes. That is to say, any problem that shows up on the exam will have been in these video notes. Okay, so again, more about that later as we develop this. This is just the first time. Exam policy, hopefully the same as the scheduled exams, also done via email, we'll work that out. Good. So far, so good. Okay, next what I'm going to do is some review, since it's been a week now. A week's a long time, lots can happen here. And we were doing chapter seven. What did we do, circular motion? Newtonian gravity. Newton gravity. Put that right there. Okay. So first of all, a circular motion problem, just to remind us. The formulas, we've got Newton's law, mass times acceleration. In the circular motion formula, we're looking at the centripetal force. So mass times centripetal acceleration. Okay. The example, one of the homework problems I just had there listed, is one that we've done before. It's like the roller coaster. It's the car going over a hill up here on the top of the hill. We say there is a normal force. There's the weight. But this hill has a radius of curvature. Hill has a radius of curvature, so what we do with this formula, we have minus n plus mg. What have I done there? The positive direction is towards the center of curvature. Positive direction towards the center of curvature equals mv squared over r. So that's how that problem gets set up. And once you have that written down, you can answer any question they ask you about it, basically. So that was one of those problems. That's the review for circular motion. Having learned about circular motion, we then learned about Newtonian gravity. So I will erase this, but this was one of the problems on our list. And we've done it before as a roller coaster problem. So we'll move on to Newtonian gravity. Okay. Let's erase this. Good. So in Newtonian gravity, We have M1, M2, two particles, two masses, a planet and a sun. And the interaction between them is proportional with the gravitational constant to the masses product, that's a two, 
and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. So that's Newton's law of gravity. Okay, how about a circular motion problem of that type? Got our circle. We're going to put one of the masses, capital M, at the center. We're going to be orbiting with the smaller mass. That could be a satellite orbiting our Earth, for instance, radius r. And now we're going to write down Newton's law of gravity again. G, capital M, lowercase m, over r squared, equals lowercase m. We're thinking lowercase m is doing the orbiting, v squared over r. Okay, so now I turn this into that circular motion problem. And from here, we can typically answer just about any question that's being asked. So this was the orbiting satellite. So I'll write here satellite M orbits central body capital M. That's what we have right here. This thing's going around in that circle. So yeah, that's setting up Newton's law. And from there we have a couple of other options. I'm going to add a little bit to this problem right here. So we also know that the speed is the distance over time, so that's the circumference of our circle, and that's the time it takes to go around the circle once, the period of the orbit, okay? So, in that homework problem I just mentioned, solve for V. And what does V equal? Now here's the advantage of the video format. You're going to be able to stop the video and do the solution. Okay. One thing I'll recommend right now for your notes, since we're on the subject, leave a lot of space. You're taking notes by hand from the board here, from the video. Leave plenty of room, and you can fill in all kinds of useful information. You can fill in uh, the, the algebraic steps. You can rewind it and fill in some words, a description. Okay. So having said that, let's solve for the velocity here. Lowercase m cancels. We've got g m over r as our result. Take the square root. The other one, solve for t, comma, the period of orbit. Yeah, but how do you solve for t? You solve for t right here. Should I write that on? Why not? Here. A little bubble here. t is equal to 2 pi r divided by v. That was a v. You've got your simplification and you're on your way. Okay, one more important point in this problem. One more important point is that we may be orbiting a large central body. Let me go ahead and use this part of the board for that. Okay. I'll put here finally. M orbit a large central body. The idea is, for example, say we're orbiting our Earth. There's the radius of Earth. And we're an equal distance above the surface of Earth. So there's our radius of um, 
radius of orbit right here. There we go. R is measured from the orbit to the center of the central body. Not from the surface, but from the orbit to the center of the central body. Here, for example, R is equal to twice the actual radius of Earth. That means we're orbiting a full radius above the surface. Okay, So that is a radius of two Earth radii. That's part of our problem as well. So I think we're set up now for those two of the three, <clears throat> pardon me, for two of the three problems that I had up here on the board. Okay, so that was the basically the review section of today. And now I want to move on to a new topic. Um, and it's the final topic of this chapter. It concerns energy and conservation of energy. It's a new twist to it. So let's go ahead and erase this. talk about energy. Okay. So let's go ahead and call this energy in Newtonian gravity. Energy in Newtonian gravity. Okay, what do we know about energy so far? There is potential energy and kinetic energy. And up until now, we've said potential energy of gravity was mgy. Okay. That was our potential energy expression. And of course, the kinetic energy is going to be the same, 1 half mass squared. Okay. But this one is going to need some modification. So this is what we had until now. Um, you know, and what we had, let's go ahead and put it this way, we had a y-axis, we had ourselves, as we always draw it, and you know, we threw a ball up in the air and we had the potential energy of that object. For Newtonian gravity, and I'll put a note here, we have potential energy is force times displacement. So in order to get the Newtonian potential energy, right now we have potential energy of gravity is going to be G product of two masses over R squared times R. Okay. And there's going to be a minus sign that comes into the mix. These are more technical details, but we're doing this anyway. Okay. There's going to be a minus sign that comes into the mix. Um, I'll put scare quotes around here, and we'll write that this leads to leading to the actual expression. This one I'll put a box around minus okay, give myself a little room here. R squared. Minus G M M over R. Right? You'll notice I had a cancellation, R squared and R. Now this is the actual definition. It takes a Integration takes a little bit of calculus to actually do this fully formally, but we have the idea here. So I have to introduce this function to you guys, and then we'll do our usual energy type of discussion. So I'm going to erase the board and just discuss this particular function. The, the potential energy function. So I'll discuss it by writing it down here and graphing it. So potential energy So potential energy of gravity and um, I'll rewrite it up 
up here, you grab the equal to minus p m m over r, first power, make some room down here. Okay. And even a picture to go with that, you know, we've got two central bodies. There's M, there's M. There's the separation distance R, okay? So there we go. So what does that look like? Minus 1 over R, basically. You know, in class we would draw the curve. And here I'm going to draw the curve. It looks like this. It's your 1 over X type of function with a minus sign in front of it, flips it under the axis. And what's key is that even though it's negative here, and it has to be negative, even though it's negative, it's increasing as we go away from the center. So that was our R axis, it's increasing with increasing R. So this was an example. Another example is if I'm standing on the Earth, and I take a trip in our direction, then my potential energy increases as I go up or away from the center of Earth, just as before. Okay, a little bit more complicated, but uh, we get some great results out of this, as I'm gonna show you right away. So that's the potential energy of gravity. And next, of course, how did we deal with gravity? Recall, we write, E sub A is equal to E sub B. That's our recipe. That's our recipe. We say no friction. We take one point A, we take another point B, and we just work through the formalism. So this example is going to be blasting off from the surface of Earth with some high velocity, just a vertical shot away from the surface of the Earth. And we'll see what this formalism gives us. So I'm going to take kinetic energy and potential energy. Um, let me fill in right here. Or kinetic energy sub A plus potential energy sub A equals kinetic energy sub B plus potential energy sub B. Right? That's what we've learned to do in prior chapters and with other scenarios. And now we're going to do it with this gravitational scenario. I've got that down there. I'm going to erase this, bring it right back into play. So here we go. Put this under there. We've got this is our point A. We're going to launch this thing. This is the radius of Earth. We're going to launch up and away up to point B. Launching up and away to point B, there's our expression, so we're going to fill this one in right away. We will say 1 half M G A squared plus potential energy at A, which is minus G M M over R sub A. Same thing with B on the right side, 1 half and the b squared minus, this minus sign is crucial, over r sub b. There we wrote it down. One equation, one unknown. What can all, what can we do with this thing? Okay. This is the blast off with some initial speed. Clearly as it launches up higher, it's going to slow down. And uh, what if we launch this thing so fast that it just keeps going out to infinity, keeps going to never come back. This is something that's possible. So if it keeps going to never come back, it's going to have to have a sufficient initial speed. If it gets out to infinity, 1 over infinity is going to turn into a 0. If it stops at infinity, so I'm going to write here, Stop at r equals at r sub b equals infinity. That's our situation. It's going to stop at r sub b equals infinity. 
which means we're going to have a zero here and a zero here. So what this gives us, make some room down here. What this gives us is one half m b a squared minus g m m over radius of Earth because r sub a was at the surface of Earth. That's the radius of Earth equals zero. And now we can solve for v. So solve for v sub a. And what do we get? V sub a equals, bring this over to the right side, cancel, lowercase m, multiply by 2, uh, put the g first, that's what we have, 2gm divided by radius of earth, and take the square root. This is called the escape velocity. If you look up the numbers in your book, Newton's gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, 2, square root, you will find it's just over 11,000 meters per second. It's, a, it's called the escape velocity. Very interesting problem. Now, I'm going to put a little bubble in here, a little blurb. For the homework problem, at the top of the lecture there, we're going to ask, what if it doesn't go out to infinity? What if it only goes up to, say, the radius of Earth, twice the radius of Earth, above the center? First of all, you would always measure from the center. You know, your R is always measured from the center. Um, but then it would come to a stop and you would have a finite height. It would really be the same type of calculation though. It wouldn't be this result. It would be a similar problem. Once you've set this thing up, you can answer all questions with it. One more problem. Um, R sub B is finite. Okay, but otherwise we have everything. Good. So I'm going to leave that as the content for today's first video lecture. And I'll give a couple more tips on how to work with this once again. And I'll put them down here in writing as well. Just so we can end the thing. But the same advice I gave at the beginning. So you want to write out notes by hand. That's just utterly crucial that you write these things out and do as many intermediate calculations as you can. intermediate calculations. You know, if I skip a step, you fill the step in, so leave a lot of space in your notes. And let's see how far we can get doing this. Now, I will be publishing more of these, and I'll tell you where to find them each time, or I'll send you the URL, and you can get a whole collection of these then. Okay. Anything else before we call this good? Okay, good. Let's have uh, let's have a try at all this.